Hello and welcome to the big picture. The two-day visit of the new Chinese pre Premier Li Keqiang to India as first country of halt since he took over as the Prime Minister has witnessed a rare bonhomie in the Indo-China relations. Especially as it comes just a couple of weeks after the standoff between the two countries in the Depchang Valley in Ladakh, which had raised concerns of the relations between the two countries worsening. However, the resolution of the standoff and the withdrawal of the Chinese soldiers who had intruded nearly 20 kilometers into the Indian territory laid the ground for the visit of the Chinese Premier. In fact, it is said only when the Indian government threatened to cancel the visit that the Chinese government decided to withdraw. The talks between the Indian and Chinese Prime Ministers over the last two days tackled this sensitive issue. The repeated focus on increasing mutual trust in the joint statement also marks some hopes for better relations between the two countries. Many significant agreements have also been signed between the two countries. Today we will discuss the significance of the visit and how important are the outcome of the discussions between the two Prime Ministers in increasing the trust and removing the distrust which has marked the relationship between the two countries in the recent past. To discuss this, I have with me an experienced panel of guests. Lalit Man Singh, former Foreign Secretary of India, Professor Srikant Kondapalli of the School of Chinese Studies at the JNU, Kiran Rijeju, former MP from Arunachal Pradesh, and Mohan Guruswami, distinguished fellow at the Observer Research Foundation and a keen China watcher. Welcome to all of you. Mr. Uh, Mr. Lalit Man Singh, the Chinese Prime Minister himself kept repeatedly saying, you know, telling us that this is the first country I'm visiting, this is the first country I'm visiting. What was he trying to make a point? Was, that, was the point which he was trying to make taken uh, as he wanted us to take? Yeah, I think he was making a point and he was successful in making the point. It was his first halt abroad. Uh, but mind you, this was not a, a normal state visit. This was a visit to get acquainted yes. with the leadership of our country. And uh, it was not a problem-solving visit. Yet, because of the background, the incursions in Ladakh, substantive issues did come up and they were discussed. But on the whole, I think the, if the intention was to establish contact with our leadership, it was a successful visit. If it was expected that they will resolve issues, it wasn't. Okay, I mean, what kind of issues, uh, you know, in the last two days, in the yesterday, yesterday and today, there has been a lot of uh, things written in the media how Indian Prime Minister has been very candid and, you know, very serious about what has happened in the recent past. You think that position which the Indian Prime Minister has taken has been taken, uh, which the Prime Minister, Indian Prime Minister took, has been taken by the Chinese side seriously? Uh, I, I think if you see the difference between the press statement and the joint, joint statement, statement, there is a huge gap in it. Yesterday, the Prime Minister raised three issues including the western sector of the border, uh, the river water issues, yes. uh, and thirdly, in terms of trade imbalance right. uh, problem. Um, none of these are reflected in the joint statement. The western sector has not been uh, mentioned in the, west, in the joint statement in terms of uh, the resolution or, uh, uh, interestingly, in the press meeting, uh, Prime Minister mentioned that the 1988 formula when Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi visited China that the bilateral relations should not be a hostage to the territorial dispute, right. that this needs to be di diversified to economic and other uh, aspects. Uh, for the first time, I think in the press statement, the Prime Minister is mentioning that uh, unless until there is peace and tranquility on the border, uh, there will not be any progress in the bilateral relations. So I think he made that point. It's a candid <coughs> observation on which the Chinese have not really uh, responded. Uh, except that in the joint statement, there is a mention about the special representatives mechanism yes. to look into the confidence building measures, furthering the confidence building measures and so on. Second, on the river water issue, there's not been any mention except the hydrological data exchange That's at the three stations in the up, upper stream uh, Brahmaputra River. Right. But that doesn't mean much because we have already have two MOUs on the uh, rainfall, water measurement uh, and uh, discharge in the Yalung Zampo Brahmaputra uh, stretch. Uh, on the third issue of imbalance, which the Prime Minister had raised yesterday in the dinner, uh, there has been some progress. Uh, for example, the industrial parks, um, which was mentioned in the joint statement. Uh, then there is also the mention about the uh, infrastructure projects. 
Uh, but cleverly, I guess, the Chinese have connected the infrastructure to the BCIM, uh, which is a big no from the South Bloc's point of that view. Is Bangladesh, China, India, India and Myanmar. Myanmar. Uh, sub-regional initiative. From 1999 to 2013, the South Bloc had been very reluctant to open up the BCIM as part of a Track 1 initiative. Uh, now, uh, it is, it is out of, now out it is the considered. Table. Yeah. So, on these issues, the three issues, uh, there is some discrepancy in the joint statement and the, uh, the uh, press statement. Is that how you look at it, Mr. Mansi? Yes, I, I, I think these issues have been raised, but uh, they haven't been pursued to a logical conclusion. The so overall I, effect is, yes, we raise the issues, and I think the Prime Minister must be complimented for the first time in raising the issues and making them public. But what has happened is, uh, in the discussions, in the official discussions, they have actually deferred the issues, and they have said, our uh, two delegations will look into this, which means we are not going to reach any satisfactory solution. Because the, this is the level at which these are decided. If you defer it to bilateral discussions at, at official level, level, you will never see a resolution of these issues. Mohan? Well, I think <coughs> if the Chinese made some certain proposals on border management, as they call it, I think the Indian government would say that, look, we need time to look into it. It's not as if, you know, the prime minister can sit across the table and say yes or no. So obviously it's not going to be reflected in the joint statement. In the, joint statement. the Chinese have made certain proposals and we have to respond to it. And we may or may not respond to it. It will take time, but we'll have to understand it, study it. You know, the military has to be consulted. The, <coughs> you know, the cartographers have to be consulted. So this is a big process in India. So I think that didn't reflect itself. Otherwise, you know, the usual platitudes are all there in that uh, joint statement. You know, it reminded me of that Harry Belafonte song <laughs> line, which says, you know, it was clear as mud, but it covered the ground. You know, <laughs> so I think it covered the ground from left to right. But you know, there's a lot of opacity about it. You, did you expect anything better? I didn't expect anything better. But I was quite surprised that the Indian side stood firm, stood tough, made our points and said the Prime Minister welcomed him by saying that you cannot have good business, good relations with problems like this cropping up every now and then. I think that was good talking. And I was very that pleasantly was tough talking. I was very pleasantly surprised that it happened. Okay. Kiran? Kiran, yeah, you know, yours is a different thing. You had raised certain issues a, couple, a few days back. You had written to the Prime Minister also about this visa business for Arunachalis who are facing a very tricky, I mean, you know, a very different kind of problem which people from other parts of the country don't have that kind of a problem. You think those issues, those don't get, are not reflected in the joint statement at least? Uh, well, I saw the statement today. Uh, it was uh, more cosmetic in nature and the business, business dealing, it will go on whether you speak or not. India needs China, China needs India. So it's a very... Both the Prime Minister spoke about the huge market potential. Yeah, yeah that, is a, that is a natural. The thing is how you miss the core issues. For example, uh, as I said earlier, the border disputes right from the eastern part of India to the western side. We say we have 4,000 4, kilometers of uh, border. They say 2,000 kilometers <laughs> because of the difference in the Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. Now, out of all this whole stretch of boundary, it is the Arunachal Pradesh, which is a totally different dimension which they have given. They claim the territory. It's yes. not a border problem. The claim is not on the border areas. It's on the state itself, all yes. of the state. One must understand this. And here, government of India keeps on bypassing these core issues. For example, every time any Arunachali is part of the Indian delegation to China, the Arunachali is left out. Now, many of the political leaders also say that we should not accept staple visa. I also agree. I don't have any uh, special attachment uh, or interest to visit China. But if Olympics are held there, Asian Games, international events, seminars, what about our uh, sportsmen, what about our academicians? Whether government of India will stand up in the international community, say that no such event should be held in China, or should India cancel the trip at all? to stand solidarity with the people of Arunachal Pradesh. Nothing sort of uh, this happening. I question every political leaders of India that if you say that don't accept staple visa, then you also don't go then. Otherwise, why we have been penalized for no fault of ours? We have been saying that since so many years that we don't recognize staple visa. We are inalienable part of India. But you, the recent statement which you yes. made is now, that, you know, let us accept staple yes. visa. Why I said that is since China has 
soften their stain. Earlier they said no visa at all to any Arunachal. Arunachal is their territory, so no. So visa you don't required. need a visa. Now they are saying, okay, we are issuing visas, but stapled one. That means they have softened their stain. Now it is up to the government of India to take the diplo diplomatic initiative. You have to grab the opportunity. Once they issue visa, that means they have accepted. It is Indian territory. Stapled means there is some disputes according to them. Now you have to take a bold diplomatic initiative to, to, get, to gain out of this thing as a mileage. I think government of India has failed. Prime Minister failed to uh, mention this uh, point, this crucial point on the... Uh, think this issue okay, as well as the border I, talks. Let me let me get all three of you uh, need to respond to this, Mr. M Mr. Man Singh first. What do you think of his uh, proposal that you know, let us accept the stapled visa visa thing? No, I don't think we should. There is an international convention that visas must be issued on passports. So how can you accept a system where it's, it's issued on a piece of paper, and that too for a certain segment of our citizens? It's wrong and it's unacceptable to us. But I, I take the point that there were many issues. They were not even raised, like the issue of the Chinese recognizing our sovereignty over our territories. We have welcomed one China policy. We have said it so many times. The Chinese have not affirmed their faith in our territorial integrity. We have security concerns about uh, their cooperation with Pakistan, which is creating uh, uh, security problems for us the nuclear, missile, military cooperation with Pakistan. They are giving two new nuclear reactors at this particular time. This is affecting us. Now, we have not raised these issues, or if the Prime Minister raised it, we do we not don't know. know. We do not know. Mr. Uh, Professor Kandapalli. Uh, I think we should not go by the uh, staple visas thing, uh, because uh, uh, it's only in the nine, in 2005, six that they started saying the whole territory is disputed. Previously, it was the issue of McMahon line. Right. It was the issue of the line. Uh, and there was the swap principle suggested in 57 and in 1980. Um, of course, we did not accept that at that point of time. Uh, yet, I think if we make staple visas as a, uh, uh, as a deal with the Chinese, uh, I think we are compromising on the uh, issue of uh, the territory and one India policy. Uh, I think. If the problem is the sports persons are not being able to go to uh, China, not just for person, anybody, any Arunachali. Uh, uh, I think we should have a blanket ban on even the others uh, on, uh, from the Chinese side. I think we should sort it out uh, through diplomatic and other means to, with, with China. I, I, if there is a delegation which is <coughs> not being given any visa to go to China, I think I suggest I, I uh, accept the uh, proposal that the whole sports delegation should be cancelled to Mohan? go to China. I agree. I think, you know, <coughs> um, staple visa is wrong. And if they insist that the Seoul Arunachal Yon, the delegation of 300 youth going to China, um, he has to be dropped out, then you should say all 300 won't go. Okay. You know, and there is a problem. not happened so far. It has not happened. That, that, that is, that it is happened the, only once. That is the it problem happened, for the Arunachal. It much happened much. only once when uh, a police officer on, a, on the delegation was stopped and the whole delegation threatened to pull them out and then they gave the visa and said, okay, let them go. Uh, but I think, you know, there are ways to tighten it up. You know, I think uh, I always wonder why we don't <coughs> suddenly start issuing staple visas for, for people from Xinjiang coming. You know? <laughs> or, you know, we can, both sides can play the game. I think it's time to play some hardball with the Chinese, you know. And I think that's the only game they understand. And uh, the more they see this as a sign of weakness in India, that you know, they can do anything and get away. Get away with it. Okay. Now, as far as the dispute on Arunachal and, and Ladakh is concerned, they are the large territorial disputes. They claim 68,000 kilometers, we claim 35,000. And this is not going to get resolved in, in our hurry. lifetime <laughs> in, a, in a hurry. I think what we can settle is where the line of actual control lies. And that is de facto the border. Right. And I think the Chinese should be brought to the table on that. But uh, th that is one, something which, uh, which uh, today a question was asked to the spokesperson of the MEA whether this was discussed and he said, you know, th this is something which has not been discussed. So anyway, uh, on that note, we need to go into a very short break. Please keep watching. We'll come back and continue to discuss many other issues which needs to be discussed. We'll be back very soon. Welcome back. We're discussing the visit of the Chinese Premier to India and asking the question if this visit has to any extent 
removed some of the distrust between the two countries. Mr. Lalit Man Singh, uh, one of the issues which are which is being talked about, which is not really so much of a, a controversy, controversy, is about the trade relations. But there also India has, has been talking about how the imbalance in the in the trade as uh, you know is affecting us. And the, today, even if you see the statement, there is a lot of talk about you know removing that imbalance. Do you think that imbalance can be removed at all? Yes, uh, it can be removed if the Chinese uh, stopped. Um the practice of restricting uh, access to companies or IT companies or pharma companies and so on. This is the big problem that we have faced in China. Whereas uh, our markets are flooded with Chinese goods, yes. our products can't get access to Chinese markets. Uh, we have also been trying to get Chinese investments into India without too much of success. Okay, Dr. Kondapalli, you think these, these, these three areas, the IT, pharma and, uh, you know, a couple of other areas, if we are allowed, that imbalance will be... Uh... I, I think already we have about 200 Indian companies who are uh, investing and uh, uh, in benef mutually beneficial relationship uh, in the Chinese market. Um, of course, we have had huge trade deficits, 20 to 30 billion dollars uh, almost every year uh, for the last 10 years or so. Um, the trade deficit has been mentioned in the joint, joint statement. Uh, can be bridged by um, the Chinese market economy status being uh, implemented with no discrimination on the Indian products. Uh, secondly, in terms of Chinese investments in the infrastructure, um, there is a mention in the joint statement about uh, heavy haulage and station development uh, in the railway sector. Uh, they haven't mentioned high-speed railways in this, but uh, in terms of the, the freight corridors, probably uh, that meant um, investments in the railway uh, sector. Uh, then there is also the mention about the industrial parks, uh, which means that the manufacturing sector. Uh, remember that uh, Mr. Anand Sharma mentioned that the GDP of India has to be uh, from 14% of the manufacturing sector to 29% of the GDP. It needs to be expanded. Uh, and we are looking at China as a, as a potential candidate in this uh, process of manufacturing sector. And Prime Minister had also mentioned about the $1 trillion necessary for fixing our infrastructure projects. Uh, uh, and, and since China is sitting on 3.2 3 trillion dollars of foreign exchange reserves, this is an attractive proposition even for them in terms of infrastructure development. Mohan? So that's where we can bridge that gap. Mohan? I think, I think, where does the problem lie? I think the problem is that there are lots of internal regulations in China which preclude the export consumption, bigger consumption of Indian goods and services. There's no doubt about that, okay? That has to be ironed out. And that can only be ironed out in China by a party fiat from top. Uh, there is a lot of dumping of Chinese goods here, you know. Uh, there's a lot of dumping of chemicals, there's a lot of dumping of textiles and all kinds of other things, which we have to now plug. checks on plug, okay? So having is said- Is it possible to plug? Well, it's possible to plug. If you have a, a determined regime looking at it, it's possible to plug. And you say, OK, uh, you know, this material is not up to standard, or the chemicals used are substandard, so it's banned. You know, you can do all kinds of things. You can have an active trade office. The prompt point is that Indian importers benefit by this, and they have a lot of clout in Delhi. Exactly. You know, they are running around the corridors of the Commerce Ministry, not the, the guys who consume it. OK. The third thing is that, <clears throat> as far as, infra, you know, Industrial parks, because I don't think China is going to invest in manufacturing in India, because Indian manufacturing would be a challenge to Chinese manufacturing. I think what China has got is a problem of lots of money sitting in American banks and becoming dust, because the Americans are devaluing their currency deliberately. President Obama has said it, that in the next 20 years, we will devalue our currency by 30 to 40 percent, which means that out of three trillion dollars, Chinese will lose one trillion dollars in the next 20 years. So it's better to put that money somewhere. And, and, and India has always been a good investment destination. We give good rates of return, you know, five, six percent on your investment. Sitting in American banks, you get zero percent right. or one percent. I think it's not that Chinese are doing us a favor of investing, they're doing themselves a favor of investing. We are more interested in two, two sectors, particularly telecom and ports, particularly which has been mentioned. And these are very strategic in nature. So that is where they want to come in a big way. No, when I, think, I think they want to come in railways now, high-speed railways. And yeah, infrastructure, of course, yeah, but yeah. port is something which they particularly... But, you know, mentioned. what is going to happen in a port? Is he going to 
uh, monitor every ship that comes and goes. You know, you get all that information by satellite. No, that is. A, I think we've got some <laughs> archaic notion of security. Don't take pictures in airports. You know, <laughs> I, I think we've got to forget about all no, that. There's, there's an overall impression I have. I mean, uh, people like Mohan can correct it. I don't think the Chinese have taken a decision to make large investments in India's infrastructure. The last time we had official discussions. They, they, I, the, today we are told that you know this is the largest Chinese delegation of businessmen and industrialists who have accompanied the prime minister. Sure. So Th that uh, may be. What are they looking for? No, but the last time we had official level economic uh, dialogue, the Chinese uh, suggested about 5.6 billion dollars worth of investments in India. That's a drop in the ocean. We're talking about one trillion dollars, which is required. I don't think the Chinese have taken that decision to use India as an investment destination. I think one trillion dollars is a big wish list, you know. Mm. But I think, you know, a few few billion dollars, <coughs> 10, 20, 30 is also good to start with. For 20, 30 billion dollars, you will get a high-speed railway network between sure. the four metros. Sure. So I think you can start with those things. Those are, those are doable. And on a build-own transfer kind of thing is doable. And I think the Chinese have to look at how to get returns on their money. They can't sit because tomorrow they have to answer history as to why did we squeeze our working class and then go and give the money to Americans to wage war in Iraq and other places. Okay. No, but, uh, okay, um, we will look at the other, uh, another aspect of this today's... Uh, they, they, there was also a lot of uh, discussion, we were told, about you know, international, other, other areas, international, and the joint statement also talk, talks about you know, communication, major international regional issues, and in the United Nations. You think that India and India's relations with China, will affect, how will it affect the global uh, scenario? Well, I think uh, to some extent we are deluding ourselves in thinking that we are two great nations of Asia and then we can yeah, work we, together. We come together and no, if world, world, the Prime Minister, Chinese Prime Minister's words today, if there has to be world peace, India and, India and China has to yeah, be Yeah, that, that's good rhetoric. Yes. But let's start with the fundamental assumption that Pandit Nehru started with in 1947, <laughs> that China and India will read, lead the Asian resurgence yes. and play a big role in the world. That has not happened because the Chinese don't believe that they need to join hands with India when they can do it on their own. So we see no signs of Chinese compromising on that position. You're talking about the United Nations. Right. Every other permanent member has endorsed India's candidature except for the China. UNSC. Except China. No, that's, that's the question I'm this, asking. That's the question I'm asking. Now that they have mentioned that, you know, we will have this kind of a, you know, increase the communication in the United, and mentioned the United Nations. This do is you nothing. think that is coming? This is nothing. Do you think that is coming? This, India, the this, support for a permanent seat for I India? wish they had not mentioned it. <laughs> because it is ridiculous that when four other permanent members have come out with public, clear endorsement of India's candidature, China is using oblique language in saying, we will cooperate in international bodies, including in the United Nations. That doesn't add up to anything. Dr. Kondapalli. Uh, I think in terms of benefits and uh, losses, uh, uh, if you look at the, uh, the joint statement, uh, I think the uh, Chinese role in Indian Ocean region has been endorsed, uh, with the uh, uh, Somalia uh, counter-piracy operations being mentioned in terms of naval ma maneuvers and so on. Uh, secondly, uh, the... Uh, the, uh, um, there was no reciprocal mention about South China Sea or East China Sea uh, that on the Indian Ocean. That is missing. Uh, uh, secondly, in terms of the, uh, uh, there has been a mention about the uh, uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization East Asian Summit, uh, uh, SARC, uh, for instance, the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation, had been mentioned in the joint statement in terms of uh, higher level discussion between the two sides. Uh, but it is not clear what exactly India got out of that. Uh, uh, there was a mention about the 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 uh, dialogue process between the MEA and the MFA of China uh, in terms of the uh, Afghanistan, uh, uh, West Asia, Central Asia, uh, and on counterterrorism. Uh, on these issues, is there is still some uh, difference of opinion on exactly how both China and India work together. But that's a process that started in November 2006 when Hu Jintao visited uh, India. And the mention, paragraph 43 mentioned there in the joint statement then that uh, China and India will work together in Asia. Now we have been mentioning about Asia Pacific. 
in the joint statement they mentioned regional, global, and strategic issues. Right. Uh, which meant I, that they. Yes, make a rejoinder. Yeah. Uh, see, I have. Uh, <laughs> see, spoken. one of the one of the issues for Arunachal Pradesh is about the you know, rivers, the Brahmaputra, all these which things. Mentioned the, also. Which is mentioned today. Which is mentioned today. See, besides that, I have I have spoken to many Chinese about their plan and their ideas. They really do not take India seriously. That is what I found. They think that now their adversaries are like Japan, United States, and Japan is no more that big threat anymore. Their sole purpose is to defeat United States of America. The grand thinking is there, very much there. If you speak to them, you will realize that. And when as a special guest during Olympics, I was there for one month in China. During that time, I've traveled. No, it was a normal one. As an Olympic official team, so that was a different <laughs> story. So I've realized there also that generally against India, they don't have any adverse feelings, general people. That is why now they are taking Chinese president visiting Russia as a first nation, Chinese prime minister visiting India as first nation. They have taken this as a conscious decision because their target is United States of America. They have to take these people along and departing from Deng Xiaoping's formula of uh, hide your power, bite your, bid your time, now they are departing it. Slowly they, they are trying to reclaim what they say, Zungo, the Middle Kingdom. That is how they are trying to project themselves as a supreme power of this uh, planet. That is, they are playing into a game. We must understand that, that we should not play into their game. We must realize that. Are we playing into their hands? I don't One think second so. thing I, is, second thing is, so. uh, Mohan, I want you to wind up this. Uh, the, is there any you know, in improvement in the trust between the two countries after this visit? Do you think there, there can be any improvement? I don't think there has been any improvement. We have to wait and see. Yes. Because trust does not come and go in a day or two. Yes. It will take time. No, has, okay. has the foundation for that been Well, made? you know, let's see. We have to see that border management agreement and see how we react. And you know, Then we'll have to start seeing how we move in the, in, in the future. But I think, you know, uh, Pew Research has shown polls again and again that 50% of Chinese dislike Indians, you know. It's no, yeah. down on the street, <laughs> you know. But, you know, but to say how that the leaders think, don't take us seriously, or, or we, our leaders don't take them seriously, we don't know. A common man on the street doesn't know, in India or in China. I don't think we can project those, those things. I think China recognizes one thing, that the biggest expansion of the middle class for the next 20, 25 years is going to take place in India. And they need an Indian market to, to sell goods and to sell services. In so they can't really and jeopardize the relationship? I, I don't think so. I don't think that anybody can jeopardize the relationship in an emerging tripolar economic order. If two get together, United States and India get together, China is in bad trouble. So it's in China's interest to see that you know, we don't become close to, to any other pole. So I think you know, <laughs> the Chinese will watch this game. And I don't think China, with all due respect to China, is in a position to challenge the United States. They have Literally, a grand plan. They yes. could have a plan. <laughs> okay. And, you know, yes, sir. Last, last words. Well, I, th I think uh, it's, it's been a good visit in the sense that we are coming to know the Chinese leadership now. It's, it's been a good visit in the sense that the Prime Minister put issues on the table. On the table. So that they understand how serious these are. But we'll have to wait and see. We have to also wait and see to find out what Prime Minister Lee says in Pakistan okay. and what agreement <laughs> that, they have. That we, we don't need to wait too much for that. On that note, on that optimistic note of Mr. Lalit Mansingh and both uh, Mohan Gurswami and the caution of Kiran Rijeju, we, we will end this program. We, in, any discussion on China can never end on any uh, definite note. We will keep, we'll keep a close watch and continue these kind of programs in future also. Thanks to all my guests, Mr. Lalit Mansingh, Srikant Kondapalli, Kiran Rijeju and Mohan Gurswami. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue on the big picture same time tomorrow.